Hi guys, you may remember a little while back we looked at a third party power button for the Fanatec Podium DD range. Today we're going to take that a little further and implement a DIY power switch and kill switch. Now if you're not comfortable with DIY, please have a look at that third party option. It's pretty damn good and i had been using it for months before implementing my own DIY solution. Whilst this project isn't expensive, it does involve directly interfacing with your DD and if you're not comfortable with that, get someone else to do it for you. I can't hold any guarantees for the success of this project for you, but for me, I've been using this for well over a week now and it has been working flawlessly. So with that little disclaimer out of the way, let's go and have a look at the parts. I did say this project is pretty simple and as such, it doesn't have many parts but I have listed them in the description so you can refer to that later on. This project, we require a project box. I had one lying around, so I'm using that. Really, you're just looking for something with enough depth to be able to fit the button and switch within that case and comfortably have some room to work. You'll need an RJ12 cable or an RJ11 plugs cable, which has the six wires attached. It doesn't matter if it's double-ended, you can cut off one of those ends. I'll run you through both the colors and numbers that I'm using for the pins on this plug. So hopefully that way, if your colors are not an exact match, you'll still be able to follow this guide. You'll then need some hardware to represent both your kill switch and your power button. I've used an industrial toggle with a guard and then a 12 volt power button with a ring LED light. In addition to this, I'm also using a patch cable that runs from the power switch to the kill switch. I have some spray paints involved for this project, but you don't have to worry about that if you don't want to. And I'm also using a hot glue gun just to try and help keep the wires in place. The first thing I had to do with this project was to cut the second plug off of the wire I'd purchased. This is the RJ12 cable. Strip back that for the component wires and then strip those wires to be able to solder them. These are very small and fiddly on the cable that I purchased, but maybe spending a couple of pounds more might be good to get you a better overall cable. I cheaped out a little bit here. Due to the way the parts have been arranged, I needed to have the front panel of the case ready first, get the switches in place and then solder the wires on. I drilled out the holes and used the same strategy as with previous buttons to make them. If you've not seen this before, there's a video linked above, but essentially what I'm using is a stepped drill bit to slowly increase the size of the hole as we go. We try not to run the drill too fast, because then we risk melting the plastic rather than drilling through it and that becomes really messy to deal with. Once the switches are in place, we then need to wire them up as follows. Pin one, which is the blue cable, we run that into the negative for the LED. In my case, that is into my power button. Pin two, the yellow cable is the positive for the LED. And again, that goes into our power button. Pin three, which is green, is the negative for the kill switch. Pin four is red and we can safely ignore that one. Pin five is the black cable and that is used for power on off. That is again the negative for that. Then finally we have pin six which is the white cable and we're using that for the positives for both the power and the kill switch and we just have a patch cable between the two to make that connectivity up. With all this wired together, I drilled a couple of holes in the back and bottom for mounting and fed through the cable to try it out. All was working fine, but the e-stop was the reverse of what I was expecting. So flipping it on cut the power on the DD1 and I wanted to flip it off to cut the power. So to reverse that, I cut out the key on the guard, flipped around the switch, had to resolder the cables to do that and then tightened it up so it couldn't turn. As you can see here, 
We open the switch guard and press the power button to switch on the DD1, and all is working as we would expect. I missed a bit of masking in the spraying process, but that just makes sure everyone knows this is a DIY project. You need to long press the power off for the DD1 to be switched off, or you can just flip the kill switch and it all switches off instantaneously. The industrial toggle gives just enough resistance so you don't accidentally switch this off, but you still might want to keep it out of elbow's reach so you don't accidentally hit it in the middle of an endurance race, because that would be terrible. The final thoughts then. For a very small amount of money, I think I spent about £20 on this all in, and some of these parts could have been sourced cheaper, you can have yourself a very usable kill switch. Having said that, I think I would spend a little bit more money on the cable I used for connecting to my DD1, just so I have a beefier gauge on those wires. That could help with the longevity of this product. Another option could be to use a RJ11 or 12 breakout board in order to connect the cable to the box. That allows us to detach that without having to solder it on and all of the soldering internal to the switch would have been self-contained. Having said that, it's quite hard to find these breakout boards right now. And when I have found them, they've been a little more pricey than I'd like. But it's food for thought if you want to improve this product. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the product. It looks good in the rig and it does the job that I wanted it to do. And all for a lot less than it would cost to get the official product delivered to me here in the UK. To help you guys out a little bit, I've got a circuit diagram for all the wiring that I've used here, just so you don't have to keep referring to the video and go back and forth because that can be a bit annoying. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a like. If you've tried this project out, please let me know. It'd be great to hear from you guys. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more of this kind of content. It's goodbye for now from me. And until next time. Bye, guys.